Gangsta William, aka OG Giggity, aka it's the answer right back, aka the people's champ. Right now, I'm rocking with the Nation of Podcasting. This exclusive here. Make sure y'all tune in. Wow. About BMF, Big Meech, in jail with him. Uh, how was that with both you guys having celebrity status? Um, you want to hear the whole story how I first met Big Meech, or you want me to cut it short? That's cool. Go ahead. Go ahead. I got time. Okay. Um, I was in USP McQuarrie, a penitentiary up in Pine Knot, Kentucky. And some guys may say the name BMF, these guys just got knocked out, busted. Like I said, I had been out there since 98, so I don't know about BMF. I had never heard of BMF. I don't, I've never heard of Big Meat. So I don't know what's going on. You know, I'm not in the know, you know, what's going on. So I heard, but I heard some, of the, some guys on the wreck, you talking about it. You know, like I said, I'm not paying attention to that. So you know, when I get transferred to, uh, Mary, uh, to, Jessup, like it's Jessup, and like I would say three, four years later, two guys show up on compound. One light skin with braids, and another one big with diamonds in his mouth with dreads. Back then, it's called a 10 minute move where you gotta hurry up. Get, if you were in the rec yard, or if you're in your dorm, you wanna go to the law library, or if you're in the law library and you wanna get back to your dormitory, you gotta go, because after them 10 minutes, compound shut down. Wherever you at, you stuck. For a whole hour, um, and it's like okay, they go to, they go to second fastest man on the compound because I used to walk fast. Get where I gotta get because I've been in the law library a lot. I had to run back to the dorm to get something out right quick and shoot back to the law library. Right. So I'm walking. It's this guy like, hey, what's up? So I see two guys standing to the side like, hey, what's up? Who are you? Oh, I'm such a we was in such such prison together. So I'm like, oh man, I don't know, I don't remember you. Kept going. So. When, later on, we in the dorm, like, yo, uh, Big Beach on the compound. I say the guy from the BMF that people been talking about, they say, yeah, I say, how you look? They say, he light-skinned. I say, oh, and it hit me. The big dude the dread was talking to me. The light-skinned one was standing next to him. I'm like, man, I might have made that man look bad. So now for dinner time, just had a compound open. So once you go eat, you go hang out, talk. So now um, we about to chat. And, and I see the guy again, so I was like, let me kind of clean it up. I said, man, what's up, what's up, yo, I need something, we're talking. So as, as the guy not talking, Big Meat trying to wait, make his way over towards us, but there's a lot of people that's stopping him, dapping him and talking to him. Right. Because these guys know, you know, the, the, the mark he left on the street. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, um, but him and I making contact, eye contact, but he looked he like a, a good little distance from me when he made his way towards me, but he can't quite get to me yet because a lot of guys stopping him and dabbing him. What's up, dog? What? That's what they talking to him. We still, we got each other in eyes sight. So when we finally make it to each other, I got the guy with me. He said, yo, gangster, this, uh, be me, be me, this gang. You know, so be me's like, we shake, we give it like a little dab thing, bop. And um, he was like, man, I read your article in Ozone Magazine, man. My heart go out to you, man. So you got a license, how you reach out to the children, da da da. So I usually go back in the dorm, but I was like, well, let me go to Rec, y'all. You know, he just come on compound. Um, I see this a legend right here. A lot of people gravitating to him. Let me go check him out. Let's go talk. So we go to Rec, y'all. You know, he's like, man, you know, I was a big now on the streets, man. I was getting money, and I'm listening to him, right? Like, so we talking. I was like, well, check this out, bro. I see you got a lot of people on um, attention. I said, man, you're going to start reaching out to the average youth and reaching out to your children and, you know, so the people could see if anything come out, law or something, they could see that you trying to do something about it. His exact words were, man, listen, if I if I reach out to children, I'm going to let them know how to sell drugs and not get caught. <laughs> I'm like, stop looking at it, bro. But at this time, I had to, I'm had i trying to change over to some positive stuff, right? I said, you know what, bro, I understand you bitter, you just got locked up, so you're going to feel like that. But eventually, you're going to change, right? I told him that. So, uh, you know, we talk, he's like, man, you know, I come up not, you know, in the house, this, this, telling me how he come up in Detroit and this, 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 this. So I'm understanding where he coming from with it. But at this time, now I'm on this new wave trying to get my life together and positive. So, you know, he just got locked up. So he's still, you know, built with the government. Right. So um, he got pulled this old head named uh, Lord, uh, I think from New York. So we used to be in the law library a lot, like I said, you know, I said, Lord, I said, man, you got to start, do a blog, because I had got a blog, you know, the lady, Wendy Day, uh, 
from Rap Coalition used to run my blog for me. And that's how I met the uh, uh, Freeway Ricky Rose from uh, California. Okay. And because um, I used to write a lot on my blog. So he liked what I used to, the, the, uh, uh, the message I used to send out. So um, I'm telling the guy, man, you got to do one of these for uh, Big Meats, man. So, so he showed me some papers. I like, see, I'm putting the guy. I said, boy, yeah, you, you, you own it. You own it. So uh, from there, bro, I see me coming to the compound with one guy. From there, two, three, four, five, a whole army. And then everybody started getting BMF tattooed on the left side of their neck with E-I-N, I mean, E-N-T mm-hmm. under the BMF, right? So I'm like, what the world? I watched this man come to that compound and build an army. And all they would do, go eat, go to rec yard, work out, and then he go back to the dorm. He gonna buy up all the wine. If you're cooking food, hustling, he gonna buy up all the food. He gonna just sit down and talk that talk. Um, good dude, respectful dude. Uh, um, when I go to rec yard, he gonna hit his do push up, hit the weight, and get in the pit. Me and him got a lot of pictures together uh, to clear up the rumors. No me and BB's never had a fight. We never had an argument. We never had a disagreement. We were two men that had respect for one another, and we just lived on compound together. And that's when um, his crew got into a fight. That's how he got shipped away from there. I had nothing to do with that. Um, actually, I was going out there to make sure he was okay. Him and I, if he ever tell the story, he would tell you. Him and I were walking together up the sidewalk when the lieutenant stopped us. and said, what's your name? I said, where you? He said, where's your name? He said, Fleming. He said, let me see your ID. He said, when you go back to the dorm. I turn around. I got two dives on me. I turn around, and he pat me down, locked me up, put him in the hole because he was the head of the BMF. And somebody had snitched to the uh, to the officers that BMF beefed with DC. So that's how he got transferred from me. But me and me never had a fight. The guy had a look. The guy had a picture crop of face all bruised. Us had to go to the hospital. I was like, man, this internet stuff. Wow, man. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, me and Big Me never had a disagreement. Okay. All right. Hey. Once again, bro. I appreciate this interview, bro. Once again, man. Like I'm a big fan. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to have this interview, bro. Like I said, I'm a big fan. We're going to have to get together and do this again, bro. Uh, you know, like I said, I do interviews every other month with Yafet. So, you know what I mean? I'm gonna, we, we need to try to get on some sort of schedule like that, man, to keep keep this energy going. Facts. That's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. I now finally put the face with the voice uh, the Nation of Podcation. Yes, sir. This boy, we take Yo, I might do a, I'm going to try to uh, mimic that. I'm going to try to do a, uh, a person, uh, what they call that, impersonation. Uh, okay. I'm going to try to do Because I like how you come with that intro. I appreciate this, it, man. This, I've been practicing yeah. it for a little while. <laughs> well, you got it down pat. I, I need to get to that point, man. I really need to get to that. But thank you for having me on your podcast, on your show, bro. Um, much love. Keep doing your thing. Because I always be thinking of ways that I can do something positive or how I can do other content. And when I listen to you, how you got it down, probably like, man, I would love to be able to do it how this brother do it, man. I and appreciate now that it. I get a chance to talk- Yo, this is pretty cool, man. This is, this is a pretty cool moment for myself, bro. Hey, I appreciate yeah. that, man. Well, like I said, we're going to keep in touch, bro. And uh, we're going to do this again, fam. All right, bro. It's all good. Thank you for having me, bro. Much love. Much love, bro. Bye. Bye.